Hello, this is Rob Hirschfeld with RackN with a short digital rebar tutorial. In this case, we had somebody in community who was asking um, how to run a command. Something pretty straightforward, um, but if you haven't done it before in digital rebar, it's going to be non-obvious. Um, and so in this case, what we've done is I've got a couple machines here running just a standard discover base workflow. And so the idea would be I want to run a command. Um, a community person was asking to do it with Docker, a Docker run. Um, I'm not going to go through all that process. That would involve building a workflow, installing Docker, and, and things like that. And these VMs don't have access to the internet. In this con my machines don't have access to the internet in this configuration. So we're going to do something a little bit simpler, but you could apply this process to anything that you want to do. And I, I strongly recommend uh, looking at the color demo. We, we often suggest this um, color demo GitHub that explains how to uh, build your own content packs. This is a little bit simpler than building a full content pack, so try this first, but if you like what you see, build a content pack. So um, here's what we're gonna do. What we what we have is in Discover Base, we have a very simple workflow. It discovers and then it waits. Um, pretty straightforward. What we'd like to do is do a, a workflow that adds some extra steps. So if I wanted to do that just ad hoc, I could take my Discover Base. You can see I've already done with this core. So I'll show you that, it's already pre-baked. In this case, I cloned it by clicking clone, and I have discover inventory and sledgehammer await. So over on the machines of here, if I switch to the machine to discover core and run it, it will do those extra work. So here it's actually doing the inventory step, and that step has um, come in and added this inventory data to the machine. That's what that stage does. Super handy if you want to use our extensive library of pre-can stages, but that's not what, what uh, the request is. So one of the things that came into the UX very recently is uh, to be able to build a, what is described as a shell stage. So it's a stage that just runs bash. So super simple. Uh, I can say echo hello uh, stage, and I can run a command like df. Makes perfect sense, and I can create that stage. Uh, let me give it a better name than this. Oops, and let me not click away. I'm just going to call it hello. Excellent. So I've created that stage. That looks really good. And if I go into stages and find my the hello stage, let's see, a little filter for it. Uh, name equal to hello. Oh, and I probably didn't name it right. Lovely. What did I call that stage? There it is. It is hello. Huh. I wonder what I did wrong. So there's the hello stage. If I look in the hello stage, you'll see this is basically empty because we're just doing a quick template. And there is the task I just created. And one of the nice things here is that this gives you the syntax exactly right for the template and the script and things like that. If I look, I can actually see the JSON for exactly this. This is the type of stage that where the template is actually embedded, or the task, where the template's embedded in the task. So quick and simple uh, to do it. And then what if, if I want to actually take and test this, which is the next thing to do, I'm going to take a workflow. I'll take my Discover Core workflow, and I'll add in my hello stage. Add that. Let's move it before the end. It's pretty good. Uh, we'll take inventory out and save it. So now I have a workflow that discovers, runs hello, and I could eliminate these, these two pieces at this point. So here in, I'm going to run discover core again, and you went that, that one extra stage was super fast, so you didn't even see it go. Um, what I want to do now is I actually want to check to see what the run log is. See, these are the machines. Here we go. So here we ran our second machine. Let's see, machine one, sorry. Here we go. And here is the hello stage. It took <laughs> 0.052 seconds to run. Excellent. Uh, so here is the log for that stage. So it ran hello stage. It did my echo. And then it ran df uh, and gave me all the information about the disks and then it tells me that it finished and it, and it ran it 
Um, so that's that is me adding a stage, adding a custom command into the system to do something I want it to do. Um, once again, look at color demo because it'll teach you how to save this and do a get management process around this this concept. Super super important. One thing I do want to point out for you to play with is um, if I want to actually take some information, uh, we have uh, a whole bunch of information here in the digital rebar provision operations where we actually talk about how you can enhance information and bring inf data from the template renderer into uh, systems. And so there's, boy, there's just a ton of information about how things render. Um, one of the things that, that is handy here is, I'm looking for it, where we actually do our expansion. Boy, this is a, long, a lot of detail in this doc. Um, and what I think I want to find is dot params. see oh it didn't even it ignored that <sighs> so in the dot params list um, what you'll find is we you can then start doing substitutions to pull information out using the template expansion and so let me just look for template expansion And uh, so what, what we have here is in the way the system works, uh, you can actually find, let's see me, I can find it. Yes, here we go, rendering templates. Uh, you can actually pull information out of the system and there's an amazing amount of information and commands that you can do to do math and things like that. So if I was looking at that uh, and I wanted to pull something out of the system, uh, Boy, there's a crazy amount of data. I'm just going to do a really simple param though, so to show you how it works. So in a, in my machine over here, we have a whole bunch of data. This is great. Um, and if I wanted to take action based on say the virtual box ID, I would need this parameter. Uh, actually, we can do have a little bit more fun than this. I can go to my profiles. I can look at my global profile, and in my global profile, uh, let's go ahead and add an ad hoc parameter be a little dangerous. Uh, let's see, so I'm going to call one called hello. I'm just going to say it's a string. And I'm going to say uh, foo. It's always a good thing to use in this. So I've created a param called foo. Now if I go into my task and find the hello task, go all Here's hello, edit this. And what I want to do is I'm going to say, I'm not going to echo stage, I'm actually going to echo uh, my param hello. So this, when it's executed in the template, will actually expand into the lookup for the parameter hello. You have to be careful if params, there's actually additional if param exists logic and things like that. So, you know, look at some of the stages we built. They have much more sophisticated uh, things. I'm just trying to show you the basics on how this works. So if I do this and save it, and I run up over here and save machines and come to my third machine and run my discover core. Wow, that compiled, everything was good. That's excellent. And I wanna go see what my, let's see, final task is, is the final task. This is task hello, so this is the, I'm navigating my task workflow execution. So in this case, let's see, we ran hello and then foo, it did the parameter substitution, which is exactly what I wanted to see. And let's have a little bit of fun. So in machine zero now, I'm gonna go ahead and edit the parameters. There's a whole bunch of stuff here, but I'm gonna come and, and take parameter hello since I haven't defined the parameter, I have to do it as ad hoc. So if I defined it, it would actually uh, put it in the system. Uh, I could actually do this even after I've been using it, which is sort of cool. Uh, instead of foo, I'm going to say bar this time. Uh, so remember, the global profile has foo, so it's defined. Uh, and now machine has this machine has it defined. So I'm going to I'm going to clear it, and then I'm going to rerun this uh, profile. I already did it. Yay back here and you'll notice this time 
instead of foo, it said bar because the parameter that was defined on the machine overrode the parameter that I find globally. Uh, so, wow, in this video, we started with something really simple, which is just I want to run a command on a machine and, and how to do that, which we've shown you. But then I, we went a little further and showed how in that command you can substitute data that we've collected either in profiles or on the machine. Um, and then I've given you a pointer to go look at color demo so you can take this work and export it from the system and then save it in Git so to make it part of your standard workflows. Um, all a lot of power, uh, very simple, trying to keep uh, operations better. So if you have questions or if you're interested in this, please, please join our Slack, uh, check us out in the community, say great things about us, that always helps other people find us, uh, and uh, let us know what you think.